right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and this week I'm going to show you how you can achieve the suspended bubbles in liquid look inside of Octane for Cinema 4D. Or in this instance, suspended bubbles in amber. Uh, I kind of have this amber effect going on here, but if you zoom into this object, you can see there are these little bitty bubbles kind of inside of this. This is something that was frustrating enough for me. I figured I'd make a quick tutorial on it because it's super easy, especially with tools inside of Octane. So if you're interested in how to achieve this effect, let's get going. Okay, so rather than start this project from scratch, I'm just going to go over at a high level how you would achieve this, especially when it comes to these bubbles uh, floating in the liquid, like I mentioned. So first and foremost, if you are just interested in these bubbles, the main thing to do here is very straightforward, is you're going to be using an Octane Scatter object. And you can locate this by going up to Objects, Octane Scatter. So let's just go ahead and delete our Octane Scatter object right now. You'll notice all of those bubbles disappeared. Let's make this a little larger. And what I wanna do here is you'll see there's a little area inside of Octane Scatter called Surface. So I want to drag my small rock geometry, which is this, inside of that area. And right away, Octane Scatter kind of has its own object. So it's going to place objects like this on the scene. Uh, if you stack any geometry under this Octane Scatter, that is what these particles will be replaced with. So feel free to do that. I'll just stick with these for now to make it simple. But as you can see, we're using this Octane Scatter, but it is outside of the object. But you can see if I uncheck this subdivision surface, it's actually alongside the whole edges of this geometry. If I were to grab the subdivision surface and try and drag it into where it says surface, it doesn't really respect that any further than the base geometry in this scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my small rock geometry and reference that. You'll notice here on count, if I up this at all, it doesn't really change this. And that is because we are referencing all the vertices on this geometry. So what we want to do is change this to surface and you'll immediately see a lot of other objects kind of pop into the scene. Surface is where now I can start messing with the count number, the seed number, etc. And from here, it's really straightforward. If I go down to my position zone, this is kind of referencing the X, Y, and Z position of all of these individual scatter objects. So I'm going to go into the center one, which I believe is Z, but don't quote me on that. I'm going to basically pull this into the negative and you'll see all of those objects kind of suck inside of this system. And there we go. We basically have our bubbles suspended in liquid already. And all I did from there is I just added a really quick specular octane material in here. So if I grab that and throw that on my octane scatter object, you'll notice it doesn't change because I do not have any actual geometry inside of that octane scatter object. So if I want to actually apply material to an octane scatter, I'm going to make a little sphere. Let's say I drop it down to like three for radius segments eight. I'm going to drag that under Octane Scatter and it is now going to replace all of those individual objects with my geometry that I generated. So now I have full control over these things. I can scale the geometry up and down. I can apply material, etc. But yeah, it's a really cool, simple effect. And this is a ton faster than if you were to try and do this with cloner objects. Octane really understands how this Octane Scatter object that's built into its system, um, how to render that way more precisely and better than it would a cloner object. Just at a high level, if you're interested in the rest of this look, I basically just have an HDRI in the scene. I have a couple lights kind of on either side, a psych with a black diffuse material on it. And then for my amber color, all I really did was make another specular object inside of Octane, added a tad bit of roughness uh, in my transmission, changed that color to yellow. In my index, I put it at a 1.5 since it's a little bit of a thicker kind of liquidy glass material. Um, and then I did the same exact material, I duplicated it, but changed the roughness to about 0.11. Then I made a octane mix material and put the clear amber and the amber blur inside of this octane mix material and then used an image, C4D octane, and then chose image texture. I can then plug in an image that it will kind of use as an alpha material between the two. The one I'm using right now is kind of this uh, grungy scatter black and white material and that just gets this little effect where I kind of have little patches of blur I have patches of clarity and I thought that was a pretty cool look so that way I could encase my ancient construction worker 3d geometry inside of this beautiful amber resin 
All right, so hope that helps. I think this is a pretty cool technique. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. If you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would help me out a ton. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. We have a ton of models, including this everyday people pack uh, right here where I grabbed this little construction worker from. All right, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.